Yesterday I talked about the boot sequence and how all the boot code is stored on the boot ROM, but what I did not talk about is how we can still access and even execute code from the boot ROM well after boot. And before we start digging in, I want to address this idea that this is a bare metal series and the whole idea is to like avoid using the Pico SDK and the boot code is technically part of the Pico SDK. But um, I don't really think it matters because like these functions are hard coded into the chip. So it's like if you want to use them, go ahead. They're there. They can save space and memory. If not, it's whatever. But uh, I still think it's worth talking about. So if you actually want to look at the source code, uh, the link is right here. Uh, just the Pico boot ROM. But uh, what we care about is this section down here, the boot ROM contents. I, I touched on this yesterday. So the first four bytes are going to be the initial stack pointer, and then the next four bytes are going to be the boot reset handler function, then we have a pointer to the NMI handler function, and then finally we have a pointer to the hard fault function. So these are like the important pointers the processor will need on that boot sequence. And then we get to the contents that's relevant to this video. So the next three bytes are going to be the, uh, the magic number. And this is just MU followed by a 1. And then the following byte is going to be the version number. And there's three of them. So my Pico, I have the third version Pico. And this is relevant to make sure like the boot ROM, like when you're using functions, uh, different versions are going to have slightly different variations of the functions. But uh, this magic number is usually just, if this is just used to like verify that you're accessing the boot ROM correctly. And then we have... Uh, three 16-bit pointers, so these are half words, and we have a pointer to the function lookup table, the pointer to the data lookup table, and then the pointer to the helper function. So starting off with the code, let's grab that boot ROM address, which is just going to be zero. But for the sake of uh, completeness, I will include it anyway. So boot read write. This really isn't necessary, but um. I, I just like to be consistent, so 0x and then followed by 8 zeros. So very beginning of the address map. So let's load that address into our 0. And you could technically just move a 0 into this, but again, consistency. And then let's load Let's load the half word. Let's first do the ASCII 2. So let's load the ASCII 2 into R7. And that is going to be an offset of, uh, let's see, 8 half words move r7 to r0 and then call uart 0 send and then let's move r7 back into r0 and let's shift right for the next character so that is going to be uh, 8 bits and then send that over the uart and then for the next line let's um let's see new line uh, access the rest of the half word so boot read write and then we'll load half word into uh, let's just load it into r0 and that's going to be half word of 9 so we want the upper portion of this and because we're looking at numbers let's call that bin hex function so first we need the size which is going to be 16 bits and now we can uh, call that uh, the bin hex since the only thing we care about is getting that one and that uh, version number back, and then let's uh, let's just go get a new line. So now when I run this, get mu, and then we have that one, and our version number is three. So now let's talk about those functions. So the boot ROM, I think there's like 20 of them. Uh, they're split into different categories. So we have these uh, the bit manipulation functions, which is just like popcorn reverse. I, I think these are kind of trivial. I don't really see me ever using these. Uh, you have your memory functions, so like memset and memcopy. And then I think th these these functions are the most important. These are the flash access functions. Now, uh, just because the boot ROM has these functions, I'm still going to make a video on like the SSI and how to like access the flash uh, from your own code. But the boot ROM does contain, contain code to uh to access the flash and this is just because like half the boot process is accessing the flash so these functions are there and i'm going to demonstrate them in this video 
and then we have like uh, some debugging functions and then some miscellaneous functions. Now on top of the, uh, the regular functions there is this floating point library and this is because ARM v6M doesn't have any floating point functions within it. So there is a, you do have floating point functions in the boot ROM. I'll never use these because I don't like floating points, but uh, yeah, these are here. Um, and to access these, there's a, there's a separate uh, function table you need to access, but these are here if you want them. And it does support both like regular floating points and doubles. And like a lot of these functions do seem very useful. Like uh, you have like this square root function. Uh, there's a lot of trigonometric stuff. So like if you're doing something with like maybe a graphics library or machine learning, uh, you have a lot of these um, really like fundamental math functions within the boot ROM. But uh, I just don't like dealing with floating points. So I, this isn't like my kind of stuff. And then finally, we have the boot ROM data, and this is a uh, this just contains like some random information. So like you have this copyright string, uh, which is just the Raspberry Pi copyright notice, uh, Git revision. So this is like what revision the boot code is. Um, you have that floating point library pointer. So if you want to access that function table, you need this pointer. Now, there's a complication when accessing either the function table or the uh, data table, and that's when you access them, you need to give a code. And I think this is just a little extra. Um, the I don't know why the devs ha added this, but uh, yeah, you need to give these like codes. So they're going to be 16-bit codes, and um, the uh, they have like a formula to generate the code. You need to, so the first character, so each code is two characters, and you shift the second character over 8 bits. And that's how you get your 16-bit character. And like you can see the code example here, you need to give the uh, helper function first the pointer to the table, and then your code. I just think this is all a little extra. Um, this is just unnecessary. I think it would make more sense to have like an index, so like this function is like, the third index into the table. I think that would just make more sense, but this is just how we have to do it. So to see this in action, let's get that uh, the, the copyright notice. So let's delete this, and the we're gonna need the data table. So we're, we're actually gonna need both the data table and the helper function. Load r1, r0, 11, and then the next half word is going to be that uh, the helper function. The copyright string has the code CR, so let's uh, let's add that in. So we're going to move. Um, we want to get the data table into R0, so move R1 to R0, and then move into R1. We're going to need R, which is 82, and then a capital R, and then shift that over 8. We're going to need C, which is 67, so just add a 67 to that, and then you should have your code. So now, to actually send that over the helper function, we'll just branch with link exchange with R2. And both the, uh, so our data table is already in R0, which is our first argument, and then our code is in R1, which is the second argument. So whenever you call like C functions from assembly, just know that, like, I, I don't know if I've already covered this, but um, C functions are always going to be in order of the registers. So I created this string function right here. What this does is it just takes uh, it takes that string as an argument, and a string is just a pointer to a li like literally just a string of characters. And at the end of the string is always going to be a null terminating character, which is just zero. So it'll look for that zero. If it doesn't find it, it will then um, send its current character over the UART, add one to the current pointer, so then the next byte and then go back to the beginning and it'll just go through this loop and then when it finally finds that zero it'll go new line and then we'll pop back into our pc so now we can call that function so just bl string and you're not going to need like to move any anything because from c functions the return value is always going to be r0 so uh we're good on that end and quick arita um you want to make sure these are half words i forgot so just make sure you have that and then have this loop so we don't run into our own code. And then when we upload this, we should get the copyright string. So 
2020 Raspberry Pi Trading Limited. So now I want to talk about some functions and I think the only practical functions on the boot ROM is the, uh, the flash access functions. So we have this connect internal flash which just initializes the SSI. We have this flash exit exit and I don't know if I talked about the exit but it just stands for execute in place and it's this feature that allows you to use the flash as like a ROM. So it kind of like in typical microcontroller fashion, you can execute code from the flash. It does take a lot of configuration. And because the flash is a lot slower than like executing code from the RAM, the uh, we typically want to use like a cache. So um, that's what the whole like back on my SRAM video, that is the whole like disabling the exit cache and using that as RAM. Uh, that's what that cache is like how it speeds up the exit. And then we have this uh, flash range erase function, which just erases a block. And then this program, which programs a block. And what I don't like is that the, so when you program, you have to program it in blocks of 256 bytes. But on the erase function, you have to do it in blocks of 496 bytes. So I, I think that's inconvenient, but that's just how it is. And we have this flush cache for the exit and then this uh, enter command exit. So this is what you want to actually get the exit working. So it gives us this nice sequence to call. So first we uh, connect the flash, then we exit exit, and then uh, can do whatever. So erase program, uh, flush the cache, and then enter the exit. So this is, um, this is typically the sequence you wanna call when doing anything with the flash. So I went ahead and added all the functions in since you didn't want to watch me just like figuring out what the ASCII two characters were. So uh, I'm just calling the four functions to configure the flash so we can read from it. And then you'll need the uh, exit address. So the exit is just going to be one followed by seven zeros and we can just read from that address. We can't write to it uh, to write we need to use that program function. But let's um let's just load whatever so let's yeah let's just load exit and then we'll load whatever is in the very beginning so load that into r let's just move that into r0 and then let's call that um bin hex so let's uh let's see what's in that and before we see what's in it, let's put something in it so so let's just store what should we store because i'm a mature adult let's store 69, 70, 71, 72. And now uh, let's first load that to our Pico. So you want to compile that, I mean, assemble that. So that was B.S. And we, you can technically use whatever architecture for this. But B.S. And then let's just put that into B.bin. And then to uh, configure our UF2 to load it into the flash, remember my uh, bin UF2 uh, program. Just go bin UF2 RPI Pico, and then specify flash b dot bin, and let's call this b dot UF2. And now we should have a uh, b dot UF2 file, which is should contain this uh, this flash stuff. So once you have loaded that UF2 into the flash. Uh, you want to make sure you load that 32 uh, before you call the bin hex function. And now when we run our code, we get that, uh, we get our numbers back. So this is now stored at the very beginning of the flash. Now I went ahead and added two more functions. We're going to call the flash range erase function. So this is going to erase a block of the flash. And then we're going to call the, uh, the program function. And I'm, as you see right here, I'm giving it the very beginning the SRAM. So we're really just going to copy the SRAM into the flash and then read that back. And I should have specified this earlier, but when we call that helper function, instead of returning a pointer to a string, it's going to return a pointer to a function. So that's what this move to R7 and then BLX R7 is. So just to clarify. So now when I load that up, we get this string, which if we take a look inside of our binary, so bin hex, a dot bin, a dot hex, and if we open that up, 
as you can see, uh, we have this is our SRAM. So uh, first we have B6, and then 48, and then AA, and then 21. So it just copied the entire SRAM, all this code, and moved it into the flash. So that's how you use the flash. Um, again, I'm still going to talk about the SSI in a future video and how to actually configure the flash yourself. But these functions are in the boot ROM. So if you want to use them, if you want to save space in the RAM, go ahead. Uh, I'm not going to tell your mom or whatever.